Today I want to talk about fishing the waggler on still water and a particular swim on a local pond. Some would call it a lake, it's between four and five acres. I fished it over 50 years and this particular swim originally was set to the side of a point. We can see the point here with a stage and nowadays I tend to fish it straight out ahead, fishing about four rod lengths out. But originally there was a big birch tree right on the point and at some time, maybe the end of the 70s, we chopped it down, maybe into the 80s. So instead of fishing to the right into a fairly deep hole of nine or 10 feet, able to get out into the open water where there's up to certainly 12 feet of water out there. I fished this swim for many years, as I say, and it's a lovely waggler swim. When the wind, which is the prevailing wind, is blowing down the pond southwesterly, you get the wind coming from your left to the right. And that means that the water underneath, as long as that wind's fairly consistent and following the, the length of the pond, you tend to get an undertow. So in other words, when you cast a waggler out, as long as you sink the line, the float will start to trot back against the flow of the wind. This is the float that I've been using. It takes three treble A and a BB. It's got a hollow tip with a, a scoop out of it. So it's a, although it's a three millimeter tip, very, very sensitive. And I've, I have it fairly shotted down. And down the line, I have just, although I'm fishing around about 11 or 12 foot deep, I have two number eights, three number tens, two pound Maxima main line, and a 0.09 reflow, uh, Preston Innovations reflow power to a size 20 Drennan Silverfish Barbless, which is a, a quite a strong hook, but very fine wire, very sharp hook, though you do have to watch if the point's going to go. And I'm just firing out a few maggots and getting the float to, to go back against the uh, wind very slowly. And it, it will, as the bait touches the bottom, it will drag and dip and lift. But the bites are usually fairly sharp where you'll get a, a definite proper lift, even though you've got this tiny shot down the line. I have discovered recently that if I go too far, which is only another sort of uh, half a rod length, it's starting to snag up and I, I was a bit mystified by this. It's not uncommon for branches to break off the trees and eventually sink bits of uh, oak trees in some of the swims. They, they need to be dragged out now and again. And this happened to me the last session a week ago. And at the end of the session, I hooked on the bottom again and I, I found out the culprit. What we've got out there is a bed of swan mussels and I dragged out a live swan mussel which was absolutely enormous around about nine inches long and over an inch and a half thick so coming in a little bit shorter is actually better and uh, I think this diagram shows the sort of two lines both sessions produced more or less a, a similar sort of uh, amount of fish around about 10 roach and a few skimmers and none of the skimmers were particularly big on the first session I did get one about two pounds and the rest up to sort of half a pound the second session slightly more skimmers fish up to just about a pound maybe and uh, in the second session I did get uh, a rather nice surprise at the end which uh, you'll see in a bit so having tackled up got this float, got the depth right. And I test the depth, I plummet with just a BB that I can move on the um, hook length. So I, until I, I know that I've got enough, some line on the bottom, not a lot, just a few inches of line. So it just, like I say, it just trips up, cast, overcast it, pull it back, sink the line, fire a few maggots, 10 or a dozen maggots every cast and uh, see how I get on. The first set of these two sessions, the first bite was after about 20 minutes, which seemed quite slow to me. I was starting to wonder if we're going to catch fish. 
and I missed it just a quick dip and then about another 20 minutes and I got got a roach a net roach and then after that it's fairly steady and the swim built up fishing fairly short sessions only a couple of hours or so the second session that I'm showing you a little bit of footage of the first fish was almost immediate very quick uh, I think it was second cast realized then the float I'd put three number eights and two number tens I really wanted to switch one of the eights for a ten which is what I did fairly soon and after that I seemed to alternate between roach and skimmers most of the roach were around about three ounces occasionally a little bit smaller a little bit bigger towards the end of the session I got one of uh, about 12 ounces and like I said I was getting these skimmers and it's often hard to quite know what you've uh, hooked when you get a bite if you get one of the bigger fish a sort of 12 ounce pound skimmer they're, they're fairly sullen fairly um, dead weight fishing a very light rod for this uh, so Normark Microlite 2 uh, there were two versions of this there was a standard 13 foot and there was a 13 foot that's got a foot extension that you pull out the butt section out and handle put the foot extension which has no eyes on it and then replace the butt section onto that foot so it makes a 14 foot bump I'm just fishing it the standard 13 foot in this case it's a very forgiving rod um, you can strike you need to strike fairly gently that you've got a fine wire hook fairly soft mouth fish and so uh, you can't strike too hard and that's partly why I want a nice uh, soft rod gentle strike as I say I, I left the best fish till last I got to the point where it was coming up to about four o'clock wanted to pack up fairly soon after that and I'd had nine roach so I thought if I can get ten roach well, soon after a minute or two later I got my tenth roach and it was only about an ounce maybe a tiddler I thought well I can give it another 10 minutes and that's what I did and in that the, the minutes ticked away got to about eight minutes down and the float dipped and again I hit one of these heavier fish but this was a bit more lively and uh, as you can see it didn't want to go near the, the uh, landing net whatsoever kept shearing away from the landing net great big boils coming up and I was pretty convinced it was going to be a roach and a roach is what it was and uh, it weighed a pound and a half so that was a very nice fish for a breach I'm getting getting a hint that there may be one or two two pounders in there uh, someone's told me that someone did get a couple of two pounders and I lost a very big roach back last May there may only be a handful of these big fish there's certainly a few over a pound in there an awful lot of ones that are a few ounces up to sort of eight or ten ounces quite how to find the bigger ones with any certainty is a, a difficult thing I fished up here a lot in uh, last uh, second half of April and into May and June so I caught lots and lots of roach anything up to sort of 50 or 60 in a, a couple of hours picking out those bigger ones is the challenge at the moment so to recap this method of a waggler tripping up against the wind is a very good one it's a good long float as you can see it's around about 11 inches long you do need a long float you don't want a short float you need a fair bit of weight this you can use heavier floats than this I think with roach you're usually better off with lighter floats with the bream you probably want more weight if I was fishing for bream there I'd be fishing it very differently and if it even if it was on the float I'd be using uh, ground bait probably a heavier float and uh, take it from there where I was catching these roach the wind as you will have seen was very swirly and they were within pole range that could fish a long pole there right around about 10 or 11 meters I would think but the wind was all over the place I'm not sure I want to try and hang on a, to a pole 
in those sort of conditions. Hope you've enjoyed this, hope you found it interesting. Until next time, goodbye for now.